Welcome to Chapter 4. In the previous session, we discussed a roadmap based on personnel, training, and investment in technology for conducting crime and intelligence analysis. Even though technology and analytical capabilities are ever-changing, truly in this final session, I want to provide some insight into your benchmarks for success as it pertains to crime and intelligence analysis. What should success look like in doing this type of work and adding this capacity to your organization? First of all, as I discussed previously, displaying data and reporting is automated. Automating information allows the freedom, the time for analysts to truly analyze the data that they have before them. Displaying data, reporting, and automating is ensuring that you are constantly allowing your analysts the time to do what they are good at doing in providing you context and depth. Analytical systems should allow for analysts to provide information with speed, provide actionable intelligence to you to address a crime and disorder problem that once took days, now takes hours, and once took hours, now takes minutes to provide you things that are integrated, taking disparate data systems and pay from a variety of different places and including them and mashing them together in ways that you wouldn't have thought about. A suspect's person that, that has visited them at the jail associated to a criminal enterprise or being a gang member, associating them to gangs or gang initiation events, things that would be easily integrated together to see a bigger and broader picture. These systems should also allow analysts to be flexible. You must design systems that if you use data processes to integrate, the systems can answer a variety of questions in a matter of moments. It is not a process by which you have to go and acquire the data, process the data, analyze, to answer the question that's been asked, but to have that already done on the front end so that you can ask a question and analysts can anticipate the next one. Most importantly, any of your follow-up questions can be answered quickly as well. These systems are flexible to address a number of questions, not just one, and again, anticipating those next questions. These systems also have to allow analysts to provide information that is of quality. What that means is, is that the information has to be 100% actionable from the time that it leaves the analyst to you receiving it. It can't be a product in which there are questions, there are concerns as if it was done correctly, there are concerns about what the next Thing you should do with this particular product is. It has to be something that you can take and develop immediate action to with your personnel. The analytical products have to have value added. They have to tell you something that you don't already know. They have to be certain that they are giving you information that you weren't sure of previously. Again, they have to be immediately actionable. It has to be something that you can take and actually answer the question and respond to immediately. And more importantly, analysis is really about adding a deeper context, as I discussed previously. It's about making sure that you have depth of who, what, where, when, why, and how these things are actually occurring. It's deeper understanding, meaning, and context. It shouldn't be just a list of burglaries in a particular area. Most of you and your staff already know those burglaries have existed. In fact, they're the ones who responded to them originally. It should be talking to you about how that those burglaries are relevant to one another, to people, to events, to other crimes and to other individuals who may be persons that you should be looking into. It's deeper understanding and deeper context. Crime and intelligence analysts should be reviewed as consultants. Again, they are independent and objective. 
Their goal, their mission is to take data and data systems and to provide you a picture of what, of, of what is actually occurring. To do that, you have to ensure that they are not subjective. They're not looking at it one way or another, but are truly objective in the way that they do it. Crime and intelligence analysis have to be dependable. You have to know that the information that they are creating is of quality and that you can depend on that information in order to make decisions. Many of the decisions we make in the law enforcement business are extremely critical decisions at critical time periods with the information given to us at that time. You have to ensure that the information that your analysts provide is information that is accurate. And you have to know that they are 100% dependable. And you should depend on them in that way as well. Analysts also have to be considered respective members of the team at all times. They have to be considered as and looked at as professionalized employees. In many organizations, crime and intelligence analysts are civilians. And the respect should be given to them as members of your team trying to accomplish the same ultimate goal. Your analysts also must be embedded with your team. What that truly means is, is that the information that your team has, your homicide investigators or your robbery investigators, or even a group of patrol officers or deputies, should look at the analyst as a person who is supporting them, giving them information that they don't already know, and ensuring that they are part of that team to address that particular problem. When all of these things occur, when analysts are having systems that allow them to provide information, when the products they provide have value and are actionable, when they are looked at as consultants and respected members of the team, crime and intelligence analysis should become central to your decision making. It should be flowing as the primary function of the way that you make decisions, not secondary or tertiary parts of your decision making. Your data should be your decision making center and your analysts are a part of that process as well. Crime and intelligence analysis, because of the variety of information that they have, should be able to be assisting in the development of successful policing strategies. Crime and intelligence analysis, as they look at the type of data and determine what is going on in a particular area, they're going to have insight outside of law enforcement knowledge and even some law enforcement knowledge about what might be successful to address this problem. At some point, crime and intelligence analysis being central to your decision making should also flow into them being part and assisting in the development of those policing strategies to address things in a successful way. Finally, using crime and intelligence analysis means that your organization is more efficient and effective. And it's effective and efficient in terms of your administration, the way you deploy your resources, what you invest in, your operations, how you deploy your resources, what you look at every single day, what are the types of issues that you're dealing with, and how it connects to a larger set of individuals you should be looking at and crime problems. And ultimately, your organization should be more efficient and effective overall in crime fighting, our primary objective in law enforcement. To bring this entire session together, we talked a little bit about why crime and intelligence should be one of the important functions of what you do within your organization. Why is it crime and intelligence analysis that you should be looking into? What it is for a lot of organizations, but more importantly, what it should be to be optimally effective in your department. If you really want to do it and you want to invest in it, whether you have crime and, analysis, crime and intelligence analysis now, or you're just starting out with wanting the capability, what does the roadmap look like in terms of your personnel? your investment in technology and in training that is necessary to do crime and intelligence analysis. And finally, what makes crime and intelligence analysis successful? What shows the value that they bring to the organization? In many cases, if you think about it, if your organization is more efficient and effective using crime and intelligence analysis, then that becomes an important investment in how your organization addresses 
not only the crime problems that they encounter, but overall how your community feels about law enforcement as well as crime reduction and the other things that occur associated to law enforcement activity. Organizations being efficient and effective through crime and intelligence analysis is an extreme investment in ensuring that crime is reduced over time, as well as your community feeling safe, secure, and protected. That concludes Chapter 4. Thank you for joining us today. If you're interested in more information, please contact us at the Matrix Demonstration Project at cebcp.org.